so I turned that bottom box here. I probably got to turn it back on. But, um,
all set? All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to High Point Community Church. We're glad to, that you've chosen to join us this morning. If you're a guest of ours, hopefully someone's uh, greeted you this morning, gave you the right hand of fellowship. If you haven't filled out an information card, we please ask that you, uh, if you do that. We'd really appreciate it. That information card sitting in the back of the seat in front of you and drop it off in one of our offering boxes. We'd really appreciate it. We have adult Sunday school at 945 each morning. Sunday mornings, make yourself available to that. Gentlemen, we have leadership meeting tomorrow night at 630. Um, so make yourself aware of that. Ladies, we typically have sweet Mondays. Um, but there will be no sweet Mondays uh, tomorrow night. No sweet Mondays for the ladies tomorrow night. The first aid training, if you signed up for the first aid training, is going to take place Wednesday, June 22nd, right here at High Point at 7 p.m. What you'll need to bring for that first aid training is a banana and an orange. Okay? So it, part of the training process, so make sure uh, if you signed up, Go ahead and bring yourself a banana and orange to that training. And uh, Sarah is looking forward to um, doing the training for you, and uh, we're excited to have you here. Thank you. All right, thank you, Guy. Uh, let's all stand up. We're going to start off with some worship this morning. And uh, the first one we're going to do is called God So Loved. It's a nice uh, upbeat one, so hopefully you know it uh, by now. And uh, it's based on John three sixteen, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Sing along with us, God so loved. So love. For God so loved the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live forever.
Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise this morning. That's a nice, uh, nice one to sing. We have a lot of fun with that one. And aren't you so glad that he overcame the grave uh, by his blood and uh, what he's uh, sacrificed uh, for us. I'm just so thankful for that this morning. We're going to continue on singing. Uh, the next one we're going to do is called uh, God of the City. It's been a while since we've done this one. Hopefully you remember it. And this one tells us that... Um, God isn't finished with us yet. You know, we look around and uh, the world seems to be crumbling uh, around us, but um, God has uh, warned us about this in his word that, um, you know, things will continue to get worse, but uh, he's in control. And uh, as long as we're here, we have a job to do, right? So uh, that's what this song reminds us, that he's not finished yet uh, doing his work. Sing along with us, God of the city. You're the God of the city. You're the king of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. And there is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. Sing for greater things. For greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. You're the God of this city. You're the king of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. The greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this Sing it out. Great. 
Amen. I like the message of that song. We're going to kind of transition into communion uh, right now and remember uh, what Christ has done on the cross for us. Well, there's a cup. It's called the cup of blessing. Remembering his blood that flowed from the body. And then this wafer is symbolic of his body. Now, we don't do this to gain heaven. We gain heaven the moment we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. But this is another opportunity to um, work through situations in our life. Sometimes we get off track, and um, it's called sin. We're all sinners, amen? <laughs> if we've accepted Christ, we're still sinners. We still have this old nature that um, I wanted to put my pulpit up, and Nance said, you can't do that. If you've never been married, we've been married 47 years coming up. You know that when E.F. Hutton speaks, <laughs> you listen. I might grumble and complain, but I know she's right. My foot is almost there, so I'm still seated at the table. So I'm fine with it as long as you are, but uh, I am grateful to the Lord for saving my soul. I didn't deserve it. I didn't want him. I mean, those of us that didn't accept him first, I didn't want him. I didn't want to be a Christian. He chose different. He wanted me to be one of his. And then he called me to serve him. So I'm blessed beyond measure, and so are you. If you look at the things that you have, the people in your life, your family, all the good things, even though the world's the devil's trying to pull that all apart now. He's trying to destroy everything that we enjoy. Our family, our world, our country, everything. But God's still on the throne. We're going to talk about that again this morning. So, But right now, we're going to take communion, so let's pray. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to take the Lord's Supper. We know that we're saved by the blood of Jesus and you specifically told us to remember your death because in your death you paid our sin debt in full and then three days later you rose from the dead just like you said we're going to so we're blessed people we, um, we all go through trials just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you're not going to have some hard times so we thank you Lord that no matter where we are, you are with us. And so we thank you for the body of Jesus Christ and the blood that flowed out of his body that gave us life. He died so that we could live. And we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you, Jesus said. Do this in remembrance of me. So we not only remember, but we also reflect what kind of difference he's making in our world if we'll just give him an opportunity. Then he said, drink it all. And then the Bible says, they sang a hymn. And then he was betrayed and went to the cross. Sing along with us. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. I confess. Bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one. Guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need every hour. I need our my
sin runs deep your grace is more grace is found is where you are and where you Temptation comes my way. When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. One more time. So teach my song to rise to you. When temptation comes my way. When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you for this time of worship we've had, and uh, we're just here to uh, give you all the honor and praise and glory that you deserve. And uh, we just thank you for the songs that we can sing, Lord, and uh, what you do in our lives. And, and uh, we just sing those words that you're our one defense, Lord. We're, um, we rely on uh, everything from you, Lord. And uh, even though sometimes we don't realize it when we start doing our own things and uh, we think that we can get by on our own, but Lord, we're uh, we're powerless uh, without you, and we're helpless without you. So we just thank you that um, you uh, work in our lives every day, Lord, and you're our defense and our righteousness. And uh, we pray that uh, your righteousness will shine through us, Lord, and, and in a will if we're willing, and, and uh, we pay attention to what we're doing and, and serving you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. Good to see you. We're, um, I'm excited about God's will, God's word. I'm not excited about what's going on in the world, though, man. But if we keep looking at it, and, um, you know, I can rail on the news every time I see it. I don't know if you are the same, but, you know, it is what it is. But God is still on the throne, so I, th I know that. That's kind of where the devil wants to pull you away from, and me. I'm not, just because I'm the pastor doesn't mean I'm there all the time. I get challenged every day of my life. For what? To walk with Jesus. 
I know now I've learned to love him. Before I, before I accepted Christ, I didn't know him. So it's not that I didn't care about him, but I didn't know him. So why would I ever care? I didn't have a need for him um, until the Holy Spirit that I know now, I didn't know then, were, was putting circumstances in my path to pull me to a place where I would consider. So I want you to consider some things today. If you're saved and you're walking with the Lord, you know what you're going to heaven, but uh, something's rocking your world out. And it's going to get worse, like Matt said. I mean, Jesus said, in the world you're going to have tribulation, but in me you'll have peace. So that's kind of where you got to find your niche. My niche, your niche is with the joy of the Lord, okay? So I, um, I want to go to uh, Psalms in a minute, but I, I think if you have notes, I need to finalize. I couldn't get to all of them last week. And I knew there was eight of them. And we'd have been here till two o'clock. So let me bore you today. We'll be here about till two. No, we're not. <laughs> we'll be out of here soon. So if you were looking at notes, we were looking at Jehovah, which is God's personal name. And there were combinations that go with it. Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide. Has he not provided for you? And then... Uh, there's Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner. So who's our banner today? Jesus Christ. He's our banner. His death, burial, and resurrection is our banner. And then there's Jehovah Kadesh, the Lord who sanctifies. So what did he do? He took me out of the world and took you out of the world and set us apart. That's the word sanctify. He set us apart for what? To serve him. For what? To serve him and make ourselves look good so we could pat ourselves on the back? No, that's what the world thinks. The only patting on the back we're ever going to do is over him and giving him glory. So before I go any further, I need to pray for his wisdom. And so I won't, be, I won't get cocky and do something stupid like I normally can. Open mouth, insert foot. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your mighty hand. I'm just so thankful, Lord, that I know you, but I'm just like everybody else. I think about Elijah who fought the prophets of Baal, and Pastor Bill mentioned that yesterday. It just brought to my mind, um, he was on top of the mountain fighting those prophets, and he wiped them all out. One word came to him. One person came and said, I'm going to kill you. And he ran and hid. We could do that, Lord. Help us to not run and not hide. Help us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. We can only do it through your strength. Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. And then there's Je Jehovah Shalom. That means the Lord is our peace. So if we're going to gain any peace in this life, it's going to come through him. He's our peace. And then there's Jehovah Tiskanu, which is the Lord, our righteousness. So when I think that, and a lot of Christians go through this process, well, what happens when I sin again? Do I lose my salvation? Do, what goes on? No, you don't lose your salvation. You can. Because once you accept Christ as your Savior, you're his forever. Now, I could change my last name, Dean, but I'm always known as a Dean. I didn't get a choice in that, neither did you. Your last name is your last name. So when I came to Christ, I'm his. I can try to walk away. I can try to do, I can try to suppress the spirit of God. It doesn't work. <laughs> the Lord will not let you do that. And when he's done with you down here, he's going to bring you up there into heaven. That's our home. That's our future. No matter what we see in the world, Jesus said things are going to get worse before I come back the second time. The first time he went to the cross, the second time he's coming, he's going to settle the score with the devil. You think right now, you, where, where is he? Why doesn't he take care of him now? Why doesn't he wipe him out? He's coming. He's going to do it. 
Right now, he's giving people in the world opportunity. For what? To receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So when we say that, we have to finish the sentence. How do you do that? You tell God that you're a sinner, you admit it. And you realize that Christ died for you on a cross and paid your sin debt in full. We just did communion to remind us. It's the only way you can go to heaven. You can't work your way there. You don't have enough good works that could pile up to, to uh, even come near the, the death of Jesus Christ. Why did he come? He came to give us life. So once you accept them, you pass from death unto life. Now, then you go through a process now of learning and growing. We're to grow in grace in him. So we're trying to do that. And, and more and more people are asking a lot of questions about what's God doing? Why isn't he taking care of? You know what we want God to do right now is to make it all better so we can keep doing what we've been doing. He's trying to get our attention. He's trying to get the world's attention. Put your trust in me and, and don't waver. And don't put your trust in, in one another. No, I mentioned Nance. I love my wife. We don't always agree though. Is anybody else out there? You know, but we've learned that I can't fulfill everything that she needs and she can't do for me, but he can. Jesus is our fulfillment. And when we let him do that, then I can love her the way I should. And uh, trust me, I'm generally, you know, he, oh, he's just a smiley guy. You know, I'm basically a mean guy. <laughs> I'm basically mean, and, you know, you're just mean. I am. That's my nature. But just because I made, uh, God allowed me to be that way, I can't say, well, that's the way God made me. And so I'm going to be that way. No, I, through Christ, you're going to learn how to be somebody that he wants you to be. So we go through uh, Jeho Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. Have you, have you witnessed these there? Now, I've been able to go back to visiting hospital visits only yesterday was my first visit in um, six months. Even before that, I couldn't go through the pandemic. You could only, you know, phone call, pray with the family. So yesterday I was able to visit Dave Colopy and um, Dennis Cummings, both in the hospital. They had trouble breathing and things of that nature. A lot of things going on, people. But... They seem to be mending, but they ask for more prayer. So I'm going to do that right now. Lord, I just pray for Dave and Dennis. Lord, that you give the doctors wisdom with them and raise them up off those beds. And how we speak health to them. We speak your love to them. And there's other situations that have gone on this week that have really hurt families. So I'm praying, Lord, that you'll comfort them. I pray, Lord, I, I grew up around Mark Novak. Um, I had to block for him. And I'd often say, when are you going to run that ball, dude? I'm blocking. But he's gone through a rough time. I just pray, Father, you'll comfort him, all the family. Olivia, the whole, all, everybody, Jessica herself. Thank you, Lord. That we're always in the palm of your hand, no matter what. We've had folks in the room that have lost loved ones in the last few months and they're coming to church and trying to figure out what's going on with their world. Thank you, Lord, that you're always there in Jesus name. Amen. So I always talk to the person in the next bed, whether they like it or not. <laughs> they're laying in a bed. They can't go anywhere. And I just got through praying with Dave. So I said to the gentleman next door and his wife was seated there. So, so what's your name? And he told me and his wife kind of looked at me kind of funny like, eh, of course I had a mask on too. So I, I said, do you mind if I pray for you? No, it's all right. I said, what's your problem? He hasn't been able to eat in seven days. He can't hold anything down. So they're going to do testing on him the tomorrow, Tuesday. 
So his wife said, I'm a healer. So in my <laughs> mind, I'm going, right there in the bed you can there's two guys you can touch and heal why not I didn't say that but (laughs) so I prayed I said I didn't grab his hand I said to his wife you grab your husband's hand and I'm going to pray over you so I prayed I prayed a simple short prayer like I normally do I'm you know I didn't I didn't uh you know, thunder out and, you know, you know, go all over the place with it. I just did it. And so the, the healer wife, she goes, I felt something. I'm going, uh-oh. <laughs> so I said, well, we belong to the Lord. We, we're praying that God's going to raise him up. Amen. So I told her a story I told you before about my father-in-law. <laughs> And he was a he was a Baptist. I told this last week. Some of you were here, real quick. And so I told her. I said, "Well, I walked into a room with my father-in-law. And there was a guy in a bed next door, and I'd seen a lot of people die, and I didn't, this guy was dying. So I prayed over him. Left a couple of days later, come back. The bed's empty. I said, "My father-in-law, well, the guy must have passed." He goes, "No, close that door." I said, "For what?" No, he was a Baptist. Okay, that means. They don't believe in faith healing and all that, okay? They believe they're going to pray. God's going to heal you. You're going to get it. No, I'm online, so the Baptist brothers are going to get after me after. But you just know, I'm telling you, God can heal. Now, so when I left, I closed the door. I said, well, what happened? He goes, nobody's listening. He said, when you left, that guy's body come off the bed and shook and fell back down on the bed. And... I said, so what happened? He goes, he went home the next day. They couldn't find anything wrong with him. (laughs) Now, why couldn't I have been there to see it? And I got to tell you this, though. It doesn't happen all the time. Some people don't make it. And I've prayed buckets, cried tears with them, and the Lord took them home. So there are things that you experience in life that damage your emotions, All of us in this room have been damaged at some point. Maybe up through school, I told you a couple weeks ago, I was voted the least likely to succeed. (laughs) You're never going to make it. Got to college and the English teacher called me in at Bible college. She said, I don't know how you passed or how you graduated high school. She had to do some special care with me, you know, with English. I'm not sure if she succeeded any of all, but um, so somebody always tells you something that hurts and you believe it and you start living in it. Nah. Let me tell you something about God. He doesn't want you to stay where somebody's put you. He wants you to be where he wants you to be, where he's putting you. It's a totally different place. And Sometimes it's a little scary. You know, when I came to Christ, I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew I loved him now because he loved me first. And uh, I said to him, I want to serve you. Show me. Dead silence. Nothing. And then all of a sudden he said, I want you to go to Bible college. I didn't know him weeks. I said, well, I figured out the devil probably wouldn't tell me to go to Bible college. It's got to be him. <laughs> so that's where I went. And then I didn't even know when I got out or where I was going to go. I said, go wherever you want me to go. And that's, you probably said the same thing. I'll do whatever you want me to do, Lord. So for the last several years, that's all I've been doing. Just connecting with him, talking to him, praying, asking him for his will. And he's responding. He doesn't say, there's that Bobby Dean again. I don't know what I'm going to do with him. No, he doesn't do that. He welcomes you where you are. He welcomes you in your self-pity. He welcomes you in your hurt. 
He wants to change you through all of that. Now, maybe life is great for you. You don't have a problem. There will come a day when he will have an issue. Some of my friends, when I first came, they oh, you're using him for a crutch. If that's the way you want to look at it. I'd rather lean on him than any one of you guys or myself or anybody else. I'd rather lean on him. So Jehovah Shema means a lot to me. The Lord is there. Um, then the number eight was Jehovah Sabiath. We talked a lot about that, the Lord of hosts. Uh, man, when you see capital L-O-R-D in the Bible, that he, you better pay attention to what he's saying. And then the number nine is Jehovah Raha. We didn't talk about that much. R-A-A-H. And this is where we're going to spend the next few minutes. The Lord is my shepherd. So when we go to, before we go to Psalm 23, there's three other Elohistic combinations. Now the word Elohim is his official title, if we could put it that way. Jehovah is his personal name. So in his official title, there are three L combinations. There, if you have notes, um, the first one is El Olam. And it means he's the everlasting God. So when I can't figure life out down here, I know he's in charge. I, I can trust him. He's the everlasting God. Uh, secondly, he's, he's um, El Elyon. El Elyon. Well, that was the first one I got up there. But that's the most high God. You know what I do now? Because the devil's fighting me. He's been fighting me all week. Has he done anything to you? He's been trying to tear me down. He's trying to put me in a corner in a box. And I know that's not what God is doing. So El Elyon is the most high God. He's the most high God. So I walk around and say, Lord, I thank you that I'm a servant of the most high God. There's no one greater than him. And there's no one that knows more than he knows. You have to come to a place where you believe that and receive that. As a believer in Christ, you're going to crumble if you don't have him in that spot. You're going to be all right for a while, and then you're going to say, well, I don't feel. That's the problem right there. Do not go on your feelings. But we, he gave us feelings. We feel love. We feel hate. We feel this. We feel that. But be careful that it's, it's not the Lord that's giving you the feeling I think sometimes when people become Christians, they think, you know, the sky's going to open up. It will one day. And there'll be a bell that'll come down and ring right over you, and then you'll know that you're his. The day I did it, that didn't happen. But I knew in my heart that I was lost one time, and then I came to Christ and I got saved. I had no idea what it was all about till I got into it. And so I learned that El Elyon is, he's the most high God. There's, there's no one greater, no one like him. And then here's the one that will probably dovetail in with Psalm 23. Jehovah Raha is El Shaddai. El Shaddai. What does El Shaddai mean? He's almighty God. So when something terrible happens to you, you know. He knew about it before you experienced it. I don't know what's going to happen tonight, tomorrow. He does. I got plans, so do you. I got things I'm going to do. I'm going to keep moving forward in Christ. I've had to go through all this my whole life. Lost, lost loved ones. I hate it. The pain and the misery, you know, it's so terrible. Some of you have lost children in this room. That's the pits right there. There's nothing worse that I could think of than losing a child. Well, one of the most cherished names of God held by many Bible people is this means, El Shaddai means the breast of God. 
Remember when the disciples were on earth with Jesus and there were three that hung close to him. John was the disciple that Jesus loved. Wait a minute. Does he pick and choose who he's going to love? No. He loved John because John was the one who laid on his breast. The others could have done it, but they didn't do it. So what does that mean? How does that play out? God has no, he's no respecter of persons. He doesn't treat me any better than he would treat you. He doesn't love me any more than he loves you. That's God. He's almighty God. Now, maybe because I've walked with him for quite a while, I, I know his voice. I know when the Holy Spirit's talking to me. But even sometimes I got to say, well, the devil wouldn't tell me to do what's right. He's going to tell me what's wrong and do it. But sometimes you got to know that the still small voice in you is the Holy Spirit who talks to you. So he's the nourisher. Think about it, the nourisher. He's the strength giver. He's the satisfier. I think we kind of know what the word satisfy means. Luke Jonathan coming up through church is a little guy and he goes, he always talks about food in the sermon. You know, one of the things about food, it doesn't talk back to you. It doesn't give you a hard time until you eat too much of it and then your body shows it. But the satisfier. Could I actually be satisfied with God in the midst of trouble? I got to go there. I got to. I can't get satisfaction anywhere else like he can give. I'm still going to hurt though. Don't get me wrong. You know, some people have this idea that Christians walk around, no problems. They're like floating off the ground. And I don't know what Bible you're reading, but my Bible says, the whole Bible talks about trouble. Men and women who went through troubling experiences and looked for God at some point. So he's the satisfier. I want you to turn in your Bible now to the book of Psalms. Right in the middle of your Bible, I want you to look at Psalm 148 first, 143, and then we'll go to Psalm 23. Hallelujah, I got 10 minutes. All right, Psalm 143. Now, I've said this many times before. At night when it, it's, you had a rough day, the things didn't work out the way you wanted them. And you're all in a tizzy and you don't feel good. You, you, you feel bad about it. You said, Lord, I, I prayed, but you didn't answer me. He did, but he just didn't deliver it yet. You see, God is an on-time God. He comes at the proper time, at the moment we actually really need him. So, um, Psalm 143 and verse 10 will tell us, well, the whole chapter. So I've said this before, read a psalm at night. To calm you down. During the day, we need the book of Proverbs. It talks about wisdom. Oh, man, do we need wisdom every day, all day long. We need to make decisions, choices. That's not, those are the, not the only two books that we read. But we, we get into the Word. We get to study. So I look at Psalm 141 before I get to 43. 143 says in verse 3, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to do any evil thing and to practice wicked works. With men who work iniquity and do not let me eat of their delicacies. Hmm. Go down to chapter 143. David is praying for God to deliver him. Have you ever asked God to deliver you from something? Maybe some sin that the devil's been using in your life to get you away from God. 
and you think God doesn't care for you anymore, he's not going to forgive you, yes, he will. So David says in Psalm 130, 43, verse 1, he says, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. And what's different with the prayer and the supplication? You know, prayer could be general. Oh, Lord, bless my food. Thank you for it. But when you supplicate, there's something in here that's bothering you. And you're trying to get rid of it. You're trying to take care of it. And so you start supplicating. You tell God different things. Maybe you're going to say, God, I don't, I don't understand. I'm upset right now. When are you going to relieve this from me? How am I going to get through this, Lord? You're not talking to me. You're, you're, you're leaving me alone right now. Sometimes God does that. In your faithfulness, answer me. See, David said, Lord, in your faithfulness, answer me. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for in your sight no one living is righteous. He said, we're all unrighteous, this Lord. We, we're all not worthy. But God, I need you. I, 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 I can't do my responsibility without you. Here's verse 3. I want you to pay attention to it. For the enemy, who's the enemy? The devil. Has persecuted my soul. He can't have you, but he can make a lot of trouble in your life. David said, he's crushed my life to the ground. He's made me dwell in darkness like those who have long before been dead. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. But then he starts remembering some things. He says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse on the work of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Verse 7, he says, answer me speedily, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me. Now, this is the guy who defeated Goliath, the giant. Sometimes there are giants in your path that seem greater than Goliath at 10 feet tall. David is saying, please, let me remember your loving kindness in the morning. Verse 8. For in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which you I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me from my enemies, and you I take shelter. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. That's I'm reading from the New King James. But in um, studying out that word uprightness, in the Hebrew and the Greek, because the Old Testament was written in the Hebrew and the New Testament was written in the Greek. What does that mean? He says, Lord, lead me in a level place. What does that mean? Because when we're enamored with life, we're, we're off kilter. We're not, we're not where we're supposed to be. We're kind of, you know, humming along and it doesn't look too good. We're just over here somewhere or over there. David said, Lord, lead me in the land of uprightness. The word upright means to be on level ground. So he's basically not talking about the ground that we're walking on. He's talking about our spirit and our soul, that we'd be on level ground with what's going on. We may not understand it. God is doing something we don't understand at the moment. He's, he's doing things in the world and he's letting it happen. He's, he's letting our country fall apart. Can we make a difference? Do we just give up? Do we, not, do we not fight back? Oh, yes, we fight back on our knees. We fight back with the word of God. We stand up for what's right, not with, well for what's wrong. So when we do that, the Lord said, you will pay a price. When you stand up for what's right and stand up for truth. We shouldn't be afraid because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Book of Hebrews. So I took that word uprightness at a level place. 
The obstacles are all around you, but you're free from them. What do you mean? Oh, I could just go forward. No. You're going to walk one step at a time. That's the way Jesus wants you to walk. You can't run ahead of him. You can't run, lag behind. Stay right with him. So, figuratively, it's the place of safety. It's the place of comfort. It's the place of prosperity. Now, I'm not talking about money, and I don't think he's talking about that either. He's, he's going to prosper us. And think about it for a moment. Hasn't he prospered you? Yes. We've had to learn how to distinguish between our wants. I don't know about you, but I was always a, I was always a good kid. I don't know about you, but I, I never complained to my parents about anything. <laughs> I, 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 I got in the habit of saying, I want, I want, I want. So we've grown up with that. I want. And so now I've, I've asked this before that how many of you in this room are spenders? You just spend. And there's some of you are savers. You save, put your hand up. You save. Look at that. You're going to think before you spend that dollar bill, you're going to put it away. But some of us with a dollar bill, I need this, I need that. And next thing you know, the dollar bill is gone. You do have to save some though. But in what he gives us, he shows us how to hang on to it and how to spend it. So it's between what I want and what I need. So Nancy preaches to me all day long about where to eat to live. Pay attention now. Where to eat to live, but not live to eat. <laughs> I've been in that last category. I would, you know, I still think I could win the hot dog contest. <laughs> not you know how many hot dogs how many watermelons can you eat i'd probably oink out after about six seven before i could eat tons of them but not now but i still think that way Is anybody out there like that you think you could do things you used to do like butter and no can't do them so what is he talking about here he's talking about our personal walk Lead me in the land of level ground. I don't want to be heavy on this side. I don't want to be heavy on that side. You know what that means? I'm going to choose sides. We're not choosing sides down here. What should we do when we go to vote for a president? Vote the way the Lord wants you to vote. I can guarantee you I ain't voting for the guy that's in there right now. <laughs> okay, Bob, this is where you got to be careful. <laughs> so, uh, no, I won't say it because I'll get in trouble. <laughs> I want to vote for somebody that's for the people and for our nation. And there's a lot of bad people in the world. I want a president that's going to make them feel like if you do anything to us, we're coming after you. All right? That's why we got military. But they're trying to woke the military guys and go like this. You can't do that now. They're doing it to the police. Defund them. Get rid of them. We don't need them. Oh, yeah. They're going to find out. We need those people to defend us. Give the Lord a clap for all those who have been defending our nation. Some of them gave their lives on a, on a battlefield. We just had Memorial Day. Soon we'll have, you know, in November, Veterans Day. And we'll remember all our veterans again. I hope we never lose that in America. You know, one of our mothers at TIBC, her son's in the Navy. And um, if you've ever been a Navy guy, they put him on a ship and uh, so 
she said, they're just putting him offshore for now. But then they didn't deploy him for seven months. He'll go all over the place. But right now they're getting him used to that big old tank ship in the water with five or 6,000 men on it. Whoa, like a floating city. When they go through the Suez Canal, the ship makes it through, but, but the carrier, they got this side of the ship hanging over on dry ground and that, that side of the ship hanging on dry ground. That's got to be freaky. So we just live in a fallen world, people, and it's not going to get better. So we have to deal with that. How are we going to get better? What are we going to do? Live in the land of uprightness. I got two minutes to go to Psalm 23. Well, if you didn't say all that other stuff, you'd be already there. They want to take our guns away? I doubt it. There's going to be some problems. I shot this cool gun the other day. I got to tell you this. I still, I got one ear and I didn't have my earmuffs on. It's a 12 gauge pup shotgun. This big. It's a semi-automatic. So it's got... A five-round clip is all you can get. So we've got three of them. So I put the clip in, and I never shot the gun before. So I, it just took me back about four feet. I bam, 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 bam. bam. Like, oh, man. It just drove me back. So I had this dream before that somebody came to our house, and they were shooting at us five years ago. I wonder if that's going to happen. Is God going to let me return fire? I learned that when there's a problem on a reservation territory, the church on the res is their command post. I said, oh, gee, that's nice to know. You know how come you didn't tell me that before? <laughs> and then we'll come into your house and take all your weapons people that might be coming it's going to be a rough day on that day well psalm 23 you've all heard this at mostly at funerals the lord is my shepherd i shall not want you know what that means i'm satisfied i'm okay i might be worrying about something and maybe worrying about something right now give it to him and stop worrying Then he says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. There's places around here that are really, in New York State, just beautiful. If you ever go up on Sliker Road off of Route 77, go by the Indian Falls Lake, be on the left. You go up around there and wind up, there's a a place where nobody, the farmer farms it. It's so beautiful. It's hilly and rolly, and then there's all the woods behind it it's probably about 30 acres of land so I say Lord if you want to give me that I'll take it (laughs) trust me you can do that not that doesn't mean he's going to give it to you but maybe he will now you see high points sitting here don't you I didn't do that he did He could do anything he wants to. He's got the awesome power to do it. So was that a want for me over there? Oh, yes. Was that a need? No, I have a place to live. Uh, And I'm happy there. But David said, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. In order for you to be restored, you had to have been broken. You understand that? You had to have been broken in some fashion for yourself to be restored. So what, what was damaged? Your emotions. Somewhere along the line, your emotions got damaged. And if you don't get that right, you're going to damage everybody else around you. That's how it works. 
because you're, you're feeling it, everybody else is going to feel it. And then he said, he leads me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. You will walk through the valley of shadow of death. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. That's most likely when you get older. But what about young people that get cancer? I hate watching those little kids on the commercial that are fighting cancer. And somebody says, well, why doesn't God walk in there and, and heal them up? I said, Lord, just give me, the, give me the, the ability to touch people and make them well. I'll take it, Lord. And, and at times it happens. But if I were to do that, then I would say, eh, you got to worship Bobby Dean, not God. No, God doesn't share his glory with anyone else. So whatever he wants to do, he's going to do it. And then you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Now we do anointing of oil once a week or once a month, and um, it's a special time. I'd like to I'd like to hear from you if something you've been going through did did anything change for the better? Did what did God do in your life, um, or has He done, or is He doing, or is He doing anything? So your cup runs over. That means He fills it up. He empties it, fills it back up. That's the Holy Spirit. The more you can let the Spirit of God control you, He fills you. And then you get emptied. And you get filled again. When you get empty, that means you expended everything that He's given you, but He's going to fill you back up. How does He do that? When you give up the control of your life into His hand. That's when. You get refilled. That filling happens all through our life, constantly filled. But if you let things of the world get you, if you cop an attitude with God, you're not going to understand that. All you're going to understand is God's hurting me. God's getting evil in me. I must have done something wrong that he's squashing me. Listen, God doesn't sit there on the throne waiting for you to make a mistake. In the mistake, he'll be there to lead you out of it. And if you don't walk with him, you're going you're gonna to stay in that. It's like the children of Israel when they walked in the wilderness because they wouldn't believe God, that he could bring them into the promised land. So God let them wander in the wilderness again. So I'm wondering... Are you wandering in the wilderness because you haven't let God have it? Let's stand as we close. I did go beyond two minutes, but it's all worth it because it's all about him. So we always have an altar call at the end. If you choose to come up, that's fine. If you choose not to, that's fine too. No one's forcing you to do anything. It's what God is doing inside here and how your relationship now. So do I have to come up front to make everything right? No. You can do it right where you are. And I pray you would. But maybe you need to come up. You know, maybe you've been stubborn and God just kind of hit you today. Trust me, he's hit me already all week before he got to you. That's how he works, you know. So God is awesome. And and as always, I want you to go out and buy as many guns as you can. No, I didn't say that. (laughs) I'm sorry, Lord. (laughs) Oh, boy. The Holy Spirit has all the guns you need. Okay, Matt. Lord, I come. I confess. Bowing here, I find my rest. 
fall apart You're the one That guides my heart Lord, I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need Nobody's looking around, so I just hope and pray that you do know Jesus Christ. If not, listen, you could do it now in the quietness of your heart. You can say, Jesus, I knew about you, but I want to know who you are. I want to believe that you died for me to give me everlasting life. And right now, the best I know, I'm putting my faith, my trust in you. I thank you, Lord. I don't understand everything. I don't understand what's going on. But I know this, that right now, I stand in a place of being lost. I need you, Lord. If you've already known him, then keep walking with him. Don't give up. He's going to talk to you. Just listen to him. So I want everybody in this room to raise one hand up. And we're going to ask God's blessing over your life. Lord, I thank you that you are all powerful. There's no one like you. I want to pray for each and every one in this room and for those that couldn't be with us. There's a lot of people out there that are just trying to make, do right, working hard taking care of their families but Jesus you're not at the center of their life we pray that they will come and that thousands of people will come to you millions of people while there's yet time bless their families Lord bless their decisions help them as they go through life in the name of Jesus Christ I thank you amen God bless you have a great week